Hey guys, we're back for another video and welcome to Hypixel Skyblock 4. I don't know. Well, anyways, I figured that it would be a good time to mention that the progression in this game is very strange. There's times when you get hit with a wall and it might take you, I don't know, a few days, weeks to pass that wall. Let's say you don't do enough damage, don't have enough mining speed. Uh, anyways, I found 10 items in this game that skip progression and basically smash through these progression walls and are probably way too strong for the points in the game when you actually have access to them. But anyways, <laughs> let's get right into it. There are two items that are ridiculously overpowered for what they do. The first of which is the luxurious spool, which gives you the silky power stone. And I'm going to put this in the same spot as the sighted power from ender monocle so anyways i'm in the end right now so let's talk about sighted so sighted is what it's the second best reforged power stone whatever you want to call it in the game for intelligence as you can see with 681 magic power i get 863 intelligence and three ability damage you get the ender monocle by killing watchers you need nine of them it takes not long at all they're literally worth like five coins on the bazaar there's way too many of them the market's completely flooded so if you're on a regular profile you can just immediately get it but if you're on iron man it doesn't even take that long to get sighted it's so incredibly good it scales up your damage with everything obviously if you're going to be a mage it's pretty much a requirement to get sighted and the only reforge that's better for that purpose is technically bizarre from eccentric paintings but that's like 90 million coins so it's like literally something like i don't know five million times more expensive i don't know how that math works i can't math i'm here making minecraft video it's absolutely ridiculous so would recommend everybody get cited and obviously it's like a super early game thing but the other one to talk about is luxurious spool now this item has been in the game about as long but it's been historically very expensive it was about a million coins per spool back in the day because it only dropped from broodmothers but they've updated the game and now it's way too common and its price is pretty much plummeted to the level that cited was at you get luxurious spools by killing arachne as you could see here it's kind of it's hard to even see it but there you go position seven you're guaranteed one every time that you kill the boss see there's a spool you get nine of them in like three seconds because people are always doing bosses here it's extremely easy and the luxurious spool gives you the silky power which is all crit damage and i don't think i need to tell you the crit damage is very Sorry, I pick up. I don't think I need to tell you that crit damage is extremely important. You need lots of it in order to use some items in the game specifically, but in general, it's one of the better reforges, or I keep saying reforges because that's the old system, powers for just straight up damage with melee weapons. Let's say you want to use a warp day OTE, or more likely, I don't know, something like a raider axe or a void sword. Dumping all your magic power into crit damage is nice and then you can put tuning points into strength and then perhaps have a pet like i don't know lion that gives you strength to help even out the crit damage because what you actually want for maximum damage is to have a bit more balanced of a source of damage that's why a lot of people will recommend hurtful as the best melee reforge in the game bloody is also very good but silky is a great starter one it's way better than commando or warrior which you just start out with i mean look at the difference 201 strength 58 crit chance and 144 crit damage so it's like roughly 145 strength and crit damage total and this is four times that so you get a huge buff and damage again for like no coins and it takes three seconds to get okay the next one is dreadlord sword now this is a best case scenario well not best case scenario but it's a very good one this is a floor four, 50 out of 50 base stat boost uh which means it's rarity upgraded dreadlord sword five starred but you don't need that you know if you hop into an entrance and you get like a 40 percent 41 percent base boost dreadlord sword it's very good and it will last you probably until about floor three if you could struggle through a completion of floor three and floor four and it will be a struggle trust me then you could technically do floor five you're not going to enjoy it but it will get you there and dreadlord sword is useful because it's just a decent 
source of damage. I'm doing 63,000 damage here, but my armor is a bit OP. I use Dreadlord Sword for literally 500 hours or a third, just over a third of my Iron Man profile. And it got me all the way to Crimson Isle. Like I used this thing for a long freaking time. And the reason I recommend Dreadlord is because you just do more damage when paired with Sighted you're just going to skip progression so much faster because if you were to try to go the traditional route with say i don't know void sword eight piece ender which is great by the way you can get to one tapping zealots fairly easily but with dreadlord you get to one tap zealots even faster and you could kill even stronger mobs like you can get to bruisers just with a dreadlord sword it's absolutely ridiculous it's going to be your ticket to getting progression decently fast in dungeons up until juju short bow so yeah i mean it's completely for the price again the market's so flooded with dreadlord swords that they're practically free but they it does a ton of damage for frankly a profile that probably doesn't deserve it for me it, it's just too early in the game to have access to this thing it's very good if i had to put a value on it if it wasn't so common, I would guess people would probably be willing to pay 500k for this thing. Okay, well, we've been talking about damage this whole time, so let's take a detour and talk about the Piconimbus. This is a pickaxe that you get from doing Nucleus runs or by rare chance if you're opening chests throughout the Crystal Hollows or doing Mind of Devon type stuff. But anyways, once you get to the Dwarven Mines, Mithril takes a really, really long time to break and normally your first pickaxe when you enter is going to be from boo boo and it's going to be a fractured mithril pickaxe which only gives you 200 mining speed versus pico nimbus which you can buy from the auction house <laughs> if you have access to it if you're iron man then sorry about that <laughs> um but if you're on a regular profile then you get 1500 mining speed that's 1300 more you basically can get to the point where breaking mithril is not going to be pain you know i mean even now as someone who's been mining a ton i'm part of the mountain seven i have like literally seven mil plus of each type of powder if you look at my mining speed it's 3600 which means that this alone is almost half of my mining speed without any sort of enchantments that is insane i mean i'm breaking this decently fast but yeah i would say pico nimbus is most useful to get those first couple of commissions out of the way to get yourself too hard of the mountain three to get to crystal hollows because again if you're using fractured mithril it could literally take you five minutes per commission or more because of how slow it is to break blocks and you're not even breaking that many blocks so even though pico nimbus is only useful for like I don't remember how many uses 5,000 uses right you'll be able to get to crystal hollows before it breaks i actually managed to use i believe it was four of these during mining fiestas to get enough for my gemstone gauntlet which is actually the next item on the list gemstone gauntlet is just the best value ever so the reason why is because it's not only a really cheap mining tool that gives you more mining speed than pico nimbus does but regardless of how cheap it is it has a topaz slot on it which immediately makes it more effective at mining gemstones than the titanium drill drx555 which i still have not managed to craft despite having 1400 hours on my iron man now granted i could have gotten it way sooner but i put it off because just gemstone gauntlet is so good i still need to get 19 plasma to upgrade my drill but the point is this thing comes with a topaz slot a ton of mining speed and the fortune's not great it does come with a you know slots for that so i do get 95 fortune which is not bad that's that's fairly decent but yeah i would recommend gemstone gauntlet over anything else you could use at that stage of the game i'm gonna upgrade soon but again 1400 hours on this profile probably by the time i hit 1500 hours i'll finally retire it but it's a great progression skip 
like you can get gemstone gauntlet so early and just suddenly be able to do all mining tasks in the game dozens of money making methods part of the mountain xp you could even go off of the dwarven mines and crystal hollows you'd be able to go to the end and be able to mine a ton of obby if you wanted with efficient miner or you can mine end stone if you wanted with mineral armor so that you get i don't know collection for crafting pets doesn't matter any block in this game that you can break you can break very very fast with gauntlet and it's just a great thing to have would highly recommend okay we're gonna go back to damage for a second and talk about the voodoo doll this is one of my favorite items in the game for a lot of reasons but mostly because of the fact that it pretty much 10 x's your damage if you were to go from say dreadlord sword to voodoo doll now why is that well let's say you need to kill crimson isle mobs and you only do like i don't know 30 40 maybe 50 60 000 damage a hit that is nothing compared to 1 million but let's say you can do the same amount of damage with a voodoo doll well it ticks 10 times so let's say i just do this now it's 300 000 per hit because i'm op but just to better demonstrate let's take off my armor look at that 90 000. Yeah, this is probably about where you would be if you didn't have uh, as good a stuff as I do. So with like 90,000 damage a hit, you can literally quote one tap or two tap Crimson Isle mobs, which is huge because grinding these magma cubes gives you access to the strength and reforge which is great for equipment it's plus five strength per piece but also you can use it to kill catanite so you can get the nether sack you can use it to kill wither specters if you need to get the souls in order to do the uh, faction quests or i would say most importantly you can get at least a million damage by proccing the voodoo doll two or three times on bosses like blade soul or the barbarian duke guy and if you get a certain amount of kills with that you can get a raider axe you can get faction xp it's just a great thing and i still use voodoo doll to this day because of the effect it has on mobs because it slows them down look at how fast this guy's running at me right i hit him with this and now he's walking speed and then of course i would hit him with the midas spoon that dude i would hit him with spoon perhaps with aurora staff which i'll talk about in a second but yeah it's absolutely ridiculous getting a million damage on the boss gives it it, it allows you to get drops is basically why i'd say one million and it obviously gives you credit for the kill too for bestiary and whatnot but yeah voodoo doll can't recommend enough and i get a lot of questions on how to actually get this because it requires a ton of gas tiers and if you're on iron man you can't get the collection use a dragon short bow with eight piece ender to hit ghasts during the night and then hope that some guy with a hyperion or whatever loot shares it with you or they'll just kill it there's plenty of people grinding gas kills just find a lobby with someone doing that as you can see i just got credit for the kill and i'm gonna get rewards once uh the timer expires so i'll teleport to me but yeah just wait until someone's killing ghasts in your lobby get a shot off on them with your dragon short bow loot share it and then you'll eventually get enough collection to put a minion down that sort of thing then you'll be able to craft it but voodoo doll would highly recommend i i should reiterate i still use it because when paired with other mage weapons it's great it is awesome the the slowing effect is a game changer next up is the aurora staff this is another one that i use in tandem with the voodoo doll and it has a very specific use case if you don't have a better mage weapon which if you have voodoo doll technically this is worse per right click you do less damage but you can fire it fair, fairly frequently but it's called to its claim to fame is the 10 mana cost per shot it's essentially an elephant gun with unlimited ammo look at this boom boom out and lagging boom 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 10 mana per shot so let's say i'm using my main mage weapon which is a spoon right a heroic Midas staff right i would probably hit it with the voodoo doll so it slows down then hit with Midas staff and these are too weak and they die but let's say i didn't have the spoon and it's like oh i gotta get shots off i ran out of mana boom that's where aurora staff comes into play let's say you've shot too many Midas staff uses you're running out of mana you got nothing left 
the game yells at you 800 600 300 400 100 out of mana nothing left boom i can still shoot this so yeah aurora staff is freaking awesome and probably the best detail of them all is that you get it from t1 kudras or you can buy it from the auction house for as it says right here 2.8 million which is about double the cost of the voodoo doll again it's pretty cheap to craft a voodoo doll but anyways yeah it's double the price of a voodoo doll you can get the coins from like literally 10 20 minutes of end node mining and suddenly you have a weapon that with the voodoo doll could kill pretty much all the mini bosses as well it's gonna be a struggle don't get me wrong it's gonna suck especially the mage one but you can still kill them it's absolutely crazy any regular mob you can kill fairly easily actually with these two items combined but yeah aurora staff it's a game changer it's cheap it costs no mana it does a really good amount of damage what's not to like about it i sound like a salesman the next one i'm going to talk about is actually taking a different direction so if we switch back to silky like i was talking about earlier and put all my tuning points into crit damage you're about to see why silky is so good and that's when you pair it with mastiff armor and a pooch sword you could use shaman sword but i like pooch sword because as you're about to see 53,000 damage and that's with a scathe pet if i were to switch to mithril golem and then go on to the dwarven mines island this is what you're going to be using to kill ghosts up until like three fourths necron with warden helmet or three fourths infernal kudra with warden helmet this is what you're going to be using before that 72,000 hp and my mithril golem isn't even level 100 yet all of this it's a ridiculous combination not only do you have a ton of hp and it's like impossible to die but you actually do a ridiculous amount of damage as well so this is the strongest bet i have on my iron man look at this almost 250,000 damage per shot and my equipment is glistening right now it's not even the right equipment it's my mining stuff it's absolutely crazy this is what you're probably going to use to get sorrow armor or uh to get plasma for drill upgrades or that sort of thing and this will work off of this island you can use it with anything i mean you could i don't know kill zealot bruises with it if you wanted but obviously you'd want to switch your pet to something else i would say maybe enderman because it gives you crit damage so you get more health like even off of the crimson isles i'm still almost at 60,000 hp and i probably do like 150,000 damage a hit 170,000 damage a hit 150 i was right on the money look at that absolutely crazy and i should probably point out this armor is not expensive at all mastiff again it's like it's like three to four mil for the set and again that's like an hour less than an hour of ender node mining and the pooch sword's much more expensive it's four mil so it's a, as much as the entire armor set but it's so worth it uh i think i've said this many times before like every item here it will break through that progression wall you're gonna do a ton more damage versus like you could try going for something like you know crimson with tarantula helmet but watch what happens if i were to use i don't know livid dagger right with three-fourths of a set that gives you strength and tarantula helmet Ninety thousand damage i'm doing three times that almost with the pooch sword and with mastiff and livid dagger three-fourths crimson with tarantula helmets actually good but it's not good enough the next one i don't actually have an example to show you so i'm just gonna have to talk about it and that's the fire veil wand it's basically a weapon that when you right click it gives you a radius of just killing everything and it's great for spawning slayers it's great for doing mini bosses it does a ton of damage doesn't cost a whole lot of mana and it's just a nice weapon to have now again i don't have it because i'm playing iron man and getting lumino fibers is pain but if you have access to the auction house i would highly recommend it especially for spawning slayers it's just so efficient especially spiders like you can spawn a spider slayer in like half a second it's great but you know i can't i can't show it so i'm just gonna give it a little shout out and move on next up is gonna be my uh this is my <laughs> next up is gonna be my mage set this is three fourths aurora armor with wither goggles you can do this with dark goggles shadow goggles doesn't matter aurora armor is extremely cheap for what it is I believe just three-fourths of it is like 2.5, 2 to 2.5 million for three-fourths. 
and then obviously the goggles you can get dark goggles from the ophelia npc in the dungeon hub you can get shadow goggles i've been using that for a while but now i have wither goggles but anyways especially if you have wisdom on it loving on the chest plate necrotic on the rest recommed perhaps if you can afford that very powerful it gives you a ton of intelligence and it gives you attributes as well i have mana pool three on my chest plate i don't have good attributes on the other ones but you can swap them using certain methods but it is the best it's tied for the best mage armor in the game technically it has the capacity to be better than storm if you were to say yeah i don't know mana pool and breeze to 10 i heard that breeze has fallen out of favor and now there's mana regen but then that was nerfed so i'm not really sure what it is at the moment but either way you can get better than storm with aurora now obviously starting out it's not better than storm but it's pretty freaking close and i got this so early in my iron man like i can't hope to have storm right now and i couldn't hope to have storm when i got this armor nearly two months ago so like i was three months into an iron man and i i managed to get this it's so easy to get for no reason like it sounds scary doing a t1 kudra but you can handle it if you have a party with a few people that know what they're doing it's not that bad it's not even really a carry if you actually play the objective now they've changed it i was about to say if you play cannon but now it's different you have to make a ballista or whatever but the same concepts still apply but anyways would highly recommend three forts aurora with the best goggles you can get your hands on it's so good and to finish off the video i am going to talk about the gauntlet of contagion and implosion belt i'm talking about both of them because they kind of go hand in hand this is much 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 later in the game but let's imagine a scenario, right? You're an archer in dungeons. You're using your Juju Shortbow, which in itself is almost a progression skip, but you kind of have to do Enderman Slayer, get it to five to unlock it, and it's kind of expensive now. So it's not as much of a skip, but it's still what you should be getting. But anyways, if you were to use the Juju Shortbow to kill, say, one zombie, I actually managed to kill three there for some reason. I think that's because of piercing. But anyways, what the Gauntlet of Contagion does is essentially if you kill an enemy, it will explode and deal 10% of its health as damage to enemies within two blocks. And the Implosion Belt actually increases all explosion damage by 25%, and that includes Gauntlet of Contagion. So if I were to swap these out, switch to, I don't know, Shadow Assassin. Boom. It's hard to demonstrate without being in dungeons but it will shred everything. Maybe if I go to Spider's Den. So basically it turns your Juju Shortbow into a clearing device. Now, obviously Spirit Scepter is still better technically if you can one tap. Yeah, it's really hard to demonstrate it without being in dungeons, but just take my word for it. It's gonna increase your damage by a ton. Imagine you kill, I don't know, three mobs with one shot because piercing. That's, and all the mobs are the same health for simplicity's sake then that's 30% of their health as damage dealt to everything around them. And with the implosion belt, it's 25% more than that. So it's almost four times or almost 40% of their health is dealt. So all the mobs that you didn't even hit take 40% damage right away. It is insane. And also it goes without saying implosion belt by itself will just straight up increase the damage of whatever mage weapon you're using. So this is a really good example. If I were to take off the implosion belt and I did this 97,000 damage, right? About 122,000, a piece of equipment, which is like a throwaway extra that you don't even think about because it's not even your armor completely separate. 25% more damage, and that applies to everything. That applies to Yeti Sword. That applies to, well, literally anything that's an explosion. Creeper Pants, <laughs> Gloomlock, Grimoire. Like, some very weird items in this game. You can use it on everything that's an explosion. It works with explosive arrows. It works with literally everything, and it costs like a mil. Gauntlet's a bit more expensive, but I would still argue that it's a nice progression skip as well for dungeons. Again, it's hard to see out of dungeons, but just take my word for it. It clears a whole freaking room with like three shots. Absolutely insane. If you want to up your archer game in dungeons, then definitely grab both of those. Well, anyways, that is it for 10 items. Technically, I mentioned 14 items because two of the items had two items. But anyways, that is 14 items. I'm going to keep the title at 10. 
that are that they just break hypixel skyblocks progression it gets you way farther in the game than you're probably supposed to be by the time you get them but yeah i <laughs> i don't know what else to say if you want to skip progression using cookies buying bits or whatever then you should use code 30 virus in the hypixel store it helps me out a lot more than you think and i would appreciate it but anyways i guess that's it so i hope you guys enjoyed I'll see you guys later